Here's a diagram of that uh, fair, uh, this, this ride, this country fair ride, where around some central axis, people on an arm, on a, on a central arm, swinging from some kind of uh, uh, hinged arm, swing around and around in a circle. Uh, the girl has been abstracted as a, a mass, just a point particle. And we're told this length here, R, we're told this length, L, and we're given an angle. And then they ask a seemingly bizarre question, how long does it take to go around once? Well, that seems like a very confusing question. What's the period? I think that probably the better uh, notation for that is uh, that we've introduced in the class. The time, it's not a variable, it's actually a, a, a number. How long does it take to go around the, a circle once? Well, I don't know how to answer that right now, and you probably don't either, but I do know that if I ever am going to answer how long it takes to go through circular motion one, uh, once, I'm going to have to know how far it is and how fast I'm going. So uh, how, how long it is is really a question of how far, how far, and how fast I'm going. How much time Time is really a question. The only way I can answer how long it takes to go around once is if I know how far it is around and if I know how fast I'm going. How far is it around a circle? The distance is 2 pi r. How fast am I going? That's a velocity. Now that is a more difficult, uh, now that is the difficult question. I already know how far it is. It's 2 pi r. Oh. But let's be careful. What's this R? For her, R is this R plus this. Let's call this, uh, let's call this R, R plus. How much, what's this R plus? We can use geometry to find out R plus. So just remember that this radius so this R plus is, uh, we can use sine of theta to find this. We could use sine of theta is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. Opposite is R plus. Hypotenuse is L. Uh, theta we know. So we can find this little addition to the radius. So really, let's not forget our radius is R plus R plus which we just calculated. We can do, we can calculate this distance by geometry. I don't think we'll need it anymore. So you can do that on the side. So now we know how far it is around the circumference of this um, ride. Now we have to figure out how fast we're going. If we know how far and how fast, then we can figure out the time. Well, it's circular motion. And we know if you move with a um, a velocity v through circular motion, you must be accelerating. Again, v squared over r, remember what that r is. You guys calculate at that and pocket that. That's that r again. Your radius, our radius is, is this whole distance r here. Uh, well, and the only, and if we're accelerating, centripetally or any kind of acceleration requires a force. So there must be some kind of force on us. There must be a centripetal force or a force that's keeping us inward. And that's equal to our, our mass. That's just a, it's just a fancy, it's just a, uh, a variation of F equals MA. Uh, this is equal to whatever mass we are. 
v squared over r. All right, so in other words, I know this radius. I maybe, maybe know her mass, but I might be able to deal with that later. Uh, so a question of velocity can be answered if I know about the forces. So a question of time was transferred into a question of velocity. The question of velocity is now a question of forces. The question, now the real question is, what is uh, the force that causing centripetal motion is pointed in the direction inward? It's pointed towards the center of my circular motion. So let's analyze the forces to see if we can identify this net force that must be on the object to keep it in circular motion. This is a net force. So what are the forces on this object? Let's identify that net force. If we can identify the net force, we know it causes an acceleration. We know accelerations are caused by an object with a velocity in circular motion. With this velocity, we can calculate, we know how fast we're going. If we know how fast we're going, we can figure out how much time it takes to go around once. So we, re uh, so this, the, the, basically the point of this question is to analyze the forces. Let's identify the forces on the girl. Forces are contact forces. There's a point of contact here. So there must be a tension upwards. And she has a weight downwards. Let's uh, break those two up. She is not... She's not accelerating. This is this one's on an angle, and if we choose our axis to be y up and down, x to be horizontal, this tension partially tugs upwards and partially tugs inwards. So I'm going to call this tension x inwards. Tension X is tugging inwards, tension Y is tugging upwards, and tension itself is tugging simultaneously up and inwards. So we're going to analyze that uh, in the next video. We should be able to come up with an answer.